Hello, and welcome to 805 Focus, where you get the latest news on all our wonderful nonprofits in the Santa Barbara County. My name is Greg Gorger, your host for today, uh, along with Cinder Sinclair, who also hosts this show. And uh, in my day job, I am the executive director of the Santa Barbara Maritime Museum. And with us today is Pedro Paz. He's the executive director of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, tell us a little bit about the history of the Education Foundation. Yeah, the, the Education Foundation was founded in 1986 by a small group of concerned citizens at the time. Uh, there was a lot of uh, desire on their part to really support teachers in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Their big focus at the time were providing $250 teacher grants so that teachers wouldn't necessarily pull money out of their own pockets and and support their, their classrooms by buying pencils, uh, anything in the classroom that they really needed. Mm -hmm. So we've been around for, for that long period of time. Wow, yeah. and that's evolved, all, what you do has uh, evolved a lot since then, I imagine. <clears throat> yeah, from 250, now we do grants up to $5,000 for teachers. Really, because yeah. they still need, they're still using their own money, so that's great to have yeah. that. And you do some wonderful programming as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we do a variety of different things for our students in the school district. Um, I'll go down, down some of them. Um, quite a bit of the work that we do, um, actually starting from the origins of the organization, is around music. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of summer camps for kids. We have drumline, a band camp, a string camp, uh, a new camp this year. Um, Sound Waves, which is based on this model called ORF, and it's um, using music and dance uh, integration. So we do that. Um, we also support a number of different um, programs in the community, including Bravo, mm -hmm. South Coast Youth Band, which is not in the Santa Barbara Unified School District, but supports students in the Hope and Goleta Unified School Districts. So they don't have really a robust music program. And eventually those students will come to the Santa Barbara Unified School District if they pursue music uh, in the secondary. So okay. we do that. And then beyond that, we do uh, quite a bit, a number of uh, academic programs. Mm -hmm. And so we have some programs that are really focused on um, making sure uh, first-gen students go on to higher education. Um, we're a fiscal sponsor of Mission Scholars, a PEAK, um, and also Innovate, which really focuses on at-risk youth uh, for the most part, yeah. So you work mostly with Santa Barbara Unified School District. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about those last three programs you talked about and, and, and a little more. Yeah. yeah, you know, one of the, the challenges has always been, um, especially in any school district, are really students, first-gen students, uh, oftentimes um, students of color, who haven't really had the opportunity in their family for someone to go on to higher education. And because of that, they don't necessarily have uh, sort of something to lean on, a mm -hmm. parent to rely on, someone to really guide them in the process. So Mission Scholars, Peak, and even Innovate help students to get to that point in time where they're able to actually apply in the case of Mission Scholars, they not only help them apply mm -hmm. um, in terms of financial aid, the applications, but they even follow that student after they have graduated and they're already starting at a four-year uh, university. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of families don't know how to fill out an no. application, <clears throat> don't know how to apply for mm -hmm. financial aid, mm -hmm. and that the fact that different schools specialize in different programs, and so you're giving guidance to these uh, youth to kind of how they should pursue their academic career. Correct. And so both Mission Scholars and Peak do that. Innovate is a little more focused on making sure kids don't drop out who are at risk of dropping out of the program or mm -hmm. school and helping them to get to that point in time. So Innovate could actually have someone who's involved in Mission Scholars and Peak. Oh, so nice. they could be enrolled in two, two different programs at the same time. Yeah, because sometimes I guess the families are so busy with careers and working that they mm -hmm. don't have uh, opportunities to, to work with their children to get, get through those programs. Correct. Some of the other things that we do too as well is um, try to support the district through an, a few other programs that are really focused on mental health. Um, we are a fiscal sponsor to an organization called Kind Mind that does work around social emotional development and they're actually doing a little bit more work in the district around that topic. And I think that's a really important topic given that during the pandemic, we had a lot of students um, really being impacted by that mm -hmm. and their social emotional health really 
really suffering out there because yeah. of that. Yeah. So you did see a, a greater need during, uh, during and after the pandemic. Yes. Yeah, incredibly a lot more. Yeah, teachers too. Teachers too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am. I'm married to a teacher. Oh, <laughs> so you know. So I saw for chance. Yeah, you <laughs> There were there was a lot of need sure. on both ends. Absolutely. And I think in particular, if you look at teachers, they were trying to help students. At the same time, they were dealing with all of the changes that occurred because of the pandemic, especially in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. Just like our first responders, you know, they're yes. dealing with the, the issues, but they're also suffering from it as well. Exactly. So there was a lot of that going on. Uh, you know, those first responders, people on the front lines had a lot going on. Yeah. Teachers were definitely part of that group. Yeah. yeah. I know, uh, you know, from my own staff, they spent like 20 minutes on a Zoom call with a class talking about whales and dolphins. Mm -hmm. And even then it was hard to keep the kids' attention. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's just a, such a struggle for the kids and mm -hmm. for the, the teachers. Yeah, definitely. And I was an English major, so I do love uh, reading. And uh, you do a lot with literacy as well, right? Yes, we've actually been doing something around literacy for the last, uh, I would say now we're probably in our third year, really focusing on that as a, as a part of the work that we do in support of the school district. Um, so the school district has moved quite a bit in terms of what they're doing around literacy. And one of the things we started with the school district to help them, support them, is uh, provided some funding. We fundraised for the district so that they could do professional development with teachers and site administrators. And great, they've, all, they've accomplished that. They did a lot of good work. And now we really have uh, m all teachers sort of going in the right direction, all sort of going in the same direction, should I, should I say. And one of the things that they're doing is really being able to support all of the different um, levels of literacy development that are happening in their classroom. Mm -hmm. So now they have the tools and resources to do that effectively. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because I know reading levels historically have been much lower than, than grade level, right? So yes. the, uh, they're able to, to improve those statistics. Yeah, the district, fortunately enough, this last year saw some good improvement, but we still have work to do in the district. And so we're kind of, kind of working on that piece as well. And as a community, one of the things that we want to do is encourage the community to read with their kids. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we're really focused on, uh, and we just had our main event last week, um, in fact, last Thursday, which is our Love and Literacy Luncheon. We were fortunate enough to raise $49,000 and that money is going to go to making sure that every TK through third grade student the district has a book they could take home and they can call their own and they can work with their parents or another adult in the home and read. Mm -hmm. And we're going to follow that up by doing some work around the community, encourage people to you know, encourage their kids to read, read with their children, read with their grandchildren if they have grandchildren in the district. Yeah. And read with their siblings too. The kids can start reading exactly. with their siblings, right? Yeah. And and we talked about this is um, you know a lot of those uh, homes, a lot of low income homes, don't even have a single book in the house. So it's so important to get those books into your house. And and you feel much, the, I'm sure the children feel so much uh, better self esteem to know they have a book and uh, and have that physical thing in their hands. Yes, they, you're absolutely correct. That's actually one of the biggest markers of whether kids are going to be um, at grade level or doing well in reading is if they have access to books. Mm -hmm. If they have more access to books, there's more of an opportunity for kids to read with their parents or pick up that book and start looking at it. Doing all of those things before they become a reader. Um, we all hope that, that kids are a reader by third grade, learning to read mm -hmm. and then reading to learn after that point in time. Yeah, oh, I, I like that. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these families don't have the ability, the, the car or the time to get to a library. So getting it in their hands right in the school is just so important. Exactly. And I think one of the things that we're looking at, too, in, in this effort is really to begin to build partnerships with um, organizations who are also interested in literacy, interested in making sure that our community uh, as a whole is doing well in that um, area and that we're encouraging, uh, obviously, kids to read. So we're looking at partnerships. Um, with our local libraries, with other uh, organizations who are like-minded and want to do that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you have a lot of partnerships <laughs> in the community? Yeah, we started um, slowly. We have a few people we can say that we are partnering with. First Five, Santa Barbara County, mm -hmm. which is focused on zero to five, mm -hmm. um, who I used to work for at <laughs> one point in time. 
um, and also the Santa Barbara Public Library Foundation. We're going to partner with them as well. And then we're looking at doing another partnership with the Goleta Education Partner uh, Foundation as well to d do a partnership with them to encourage literacy in their school district as well because it's much more not just a Santa Barbara Unified School District focused idea, but it's a community focused idea. Yeah. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice. And um, so that's you, so you're doing work throughout the, the school year. Yes. And you have the summer programs. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more about the music and, and arts that you do. Yeah, one of the things, uh, I, the origin of the reason why we're doing so much work around music, and you'll see quite a bit on our website, is there, there was a period of time where music programs in our schools were not well supported. It was the first thing that was cut. And we know that uh, music and the arts are an important part of an education for a child. Um, it is the piece that may keep that one particular student engaged and involved in school. So we've always felt it really an important piece to support that. Um, and so we do a number of different things, including we provide some funding to all of our music teachers in the school district, all our secondary music teachers in the school district. We also, in the month of February, we have a campaign called Keep the Beat. We do it in partnership with KTYD, our local radio station. And so we do two things at the same time in that month. One is that we ask the community to donate an instrument. You're not using an instrument, you have a guitar, you have a violin, you have a trumpet, you're a sax, uh, saxophone in, in, the, in the garage or just in the attic, bring it to us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that instrument, we're gonna put it in the hands of the student so that their ability to practice, to learn how to play an instrument, doesn't begin and end in the classroom. It actually continues past the classroom. So we do that. And then the second thing we do during the month of February is that we collect money. Mm -hmm. Because as much as we appreciate all those instruments, some of those have been out of commission for a while. They need a little help. They need to be restrung. Um, they need to be tuned. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll get a variety of dif different instruments and we'll also collect money to do that work throughout the year. Um, and so we collect instruments throughout the year. February is our month that we focus on, but we do it throughout the year. And so that's one of the other pieces that we do in support of kids and, um, and, and their programs. We also support, uh, as I mentioned, the South Coast Youth Band, which is um, not in the Santa Barbara Unified School District. And that helps students who are eventually will get in the Santa Barbara Unified School District to be exposed to music. And one of the things that we do see is that some of our sister uh, school districts just don't have as much resources. They don't have a formal program. So we help them to, to do that. Um, and their students. Yeah. Happy to do that. Yeah. Wonderful. And doesn't it, I, I've heard that studies show that you know, music helps them with math and other totally. skills, right? And yes. With all their, their mm -hmm. educational programming. Yes. Um, music is a, is a gateway to learning. Um, it's also kind of a, a literacy piece too because if you learn how to do, uh, read music, it's also kind of in a way learning how to read, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's also very, um, you know, it's cognitive. You're using your brain. You're, you're, you're using your brain in a way that m forces you to think in different parts of your brain. So it's a wonderful opportunity for kids to engage in that, but also help them with other areas that they're, they're working on too as well. Oh, wonderful. Well, and I know a lot of us have old instruments in, in our yes. attics, right? So, yeah. so bring them to you and you'll get them in good yes. hands. Yes, in, in the month of February, but even throughout the year. Yeah. Just uh, call us, contact us, we're happy to, right. to talk to you about that. And tell me a little bit more, because you work with early childhood education too, right? Yes, that's actually one of the pieces that we want to do more work around. Uh, one of the things that we have done with the school districts is on their behalf is take in funding. Um, if the school district applies for a grant, we'll take in the funding and augment what's already happening in, in the classroom. <clears throat> One of the things that we have done, for example, um, at my old workplace, uh, my previous workplace, Santa Barbara Foundation, uh, has the William and Lottie Daniel Fund, which is uh, a fund set aside for working parents to pr uh, help them to provide childcare for their kids. So we've, on behalf of the school district, applied for that um, and take that money in. And then the money goes back to parents in the district who want to send their kids to a childcare. And the, the fortunate part is 
all of, uh, well, there's a number of preschools in the district, and so parents have the opportunity to send their kids to preschool before they start kindergarten or TK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, uh, that support <coughs> is probably even more important now because I know a lot of that is getting cut at the federal level after yeah. COVID. And, and, you know, most of these families are working two, three, four jobs and they yes. don't have the funds to pay for that. And, and preschool is so important. Completely. It's one of the pieces that I think um, people do in a way take for granted, but it, it's, it's an economic driver. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the statific, statistic off the top of my head, but during the pandemic, for example, I think there were somewhere in the neighborhood about 600,000 um, women who dropped out of the workforce just to be able to care for their child. Mm -hmm. I mean, 600,000 people who were not contributing back into the economy and helping, right? Yeah. And helping their families at that point in time. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So it's, it's an important piece of our economy. It's something that we all need to be paying attention to. And if we don't, um, ultimately we'll all pay the price because it, it's, it's, a, it's a driver of our economy. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you have to have the child care <coughs> in order to have the job. And yeah. not only that, but I think the other part too that people also um, think of, it's, it's not babysitting. Mm -hmm. Earlier care and education yeah. is about helping kids pr and preparing them to start kindergarten. Yeah, they're it's putting about school readiness. books in their hand at that totally. age, right? Yes, yeah. completely. Yeah, exactly. Because the more prepared they are at that point in time to enter uh, kindergarten, the more <coughs> ready are they to, to read, actually. Yeah, and so, how to behave in the classroom. Exactly. And, and how, what to expect. <coughs> so it's not a yeah. scary thing when they get show yeah. up in kindergarten. Yeah, my son had the opportunity to go to early care and education, actually, since he was a uh, a baby and then toddler and then uh, a five-year-old and he was ready yeah. when he started so you're absolutely correct yes. so important yes so how can can people volunteer for uh, <coughs> for your organization yes uh, we have some opportunities for people to volunteer mostly around our events mm -hmm. so we just had that love of literacy event that I spoke of we would love more volunteers we need a lot of help during our events we, we are a small and mighty staff of the total of five Wow. And uh, we can't do it all. And so we love volunteers for that kind of event. We also have our Hope Awards, uh, which is coming up later in the spring. And that's another opportunity for people to volunteer as well. It's our biggest fundraiser. And it's when we honor um, individuals in the community who have contributed to uh, the Santa Barbara Unified School District in some way, shape, or form. Last year, we had the opportunity to honor Senator, State Senator Monica Limon and Abe Jahadami, who is the retired uh, director of um, uh, sports at Santa Marcus High School and was actually my soccer coach when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Nice. And, yeah. and Senator Limon, I know, is a big advocate for education and Com child care. Yes, Absolutely. completely, completely. Yeah. So they can sign up to be a volunteer on your website? Can they look at that? Yeah, they can just contact us on our website, send us an email and to any of us, and we'll work with them. We've gotten a few people that, that have volunteered, have uh -huh. just found out about us, want to be involved. They love our mission. Mm -hmm. They want to be involved around literacy or helping kids, yeah. students in the district. And so, yes, go right. to our website. Yeah. And I'm sure you are, you know, you're not a government agency, so you're a non no. office, so you depend on donations. So how can people financially support you? Again, going to our website, we have a donate button on the top right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can go and click on that button. Um, and they can also, you know, learn a lot more about us as an organization and then find their passion, what they like about us and support that. And so we're, we're always hoping and, and, uh, and willing to receive any donation that we, that we, we can get. Yeah, okay. for sure. Or go to uh, support one of the events that you do. Completely. The, the fundraising wise. <clears throat> and the Hope Awards is really quite a nice event. We've had it at the Santa Barbara Historic Museum, so it's a beautiful venue. And I, I think we're gonna have it this year again there. Um, and it's a great place to kind of go and hang out and, uh, and support education locally. Yeah. And it's great to see how you have evolved, basically, according to the needs of, of our, our schools and our children, right? Yes. Over the years. Yes, we, we definitely have gone from those $250 grants to the $5,000 grants. And we've actually expanded that program, for example. And now this year, we're hoping to provide up to $200,000 in grants to our teachers in our school district. We were fortunate enough this, la this last year to receive a grant from Google. Oh. Um, and it's going to be focused on STEM and STEM education. And so we're hoping to inspire the next generation of engineers and 
mechanical engineer. Or, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pedro. This has been great. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time on 805 Focus.